Welcome back. Last time we used a regular expression to split apart a statsd message. This allowed us to normalize the tag order, which may vary between messages containing the same metric. We use this normalized tag order to create a normalized metric string containing the measurement name and then the tags. And with this, we can ensure that we consistently shard the same metric to the same statsd server. The code we wrote the code we wrote last time was standalone um, as we worked through how to use Rust's regex library to parse a statsd message. So let's merge that logic into our existing code base. If you, if you recall last time, we tried to use some capture groups, couldn't figure out how to get that to work with uh, nested capture groups and then capture groups that repeat or have repeat matches. So instead, we moved to using a regex to split on the different parts of the message. So first, let's move the regex compilation in. And let's see while running, so we can do it above here. I'm sure we'll end up refactoring a lot of this into a function at some point. So this collects them. Well, I just read about collect a couple days ago in the Rust book, but I forget what it was all about now. OK, so this collects the parsed um, string to a bunch of parts. So we'll do this per line. And uh, let's see, that'll end up being that. Declare mutable parts there. That sounds right. All right, and then we removed the metric name. <clears throat> All right, I should uh, copy these comments too because they'll be important to address later on in the future. All right, and then we simply, right, okay. We actually don't need to do that, but we do need to do the sorts there. And then we're sorting, don't need to print again. Sort it and then push the metric back, or the measurement back on the front. I'm using some terminology from different vendors. Um, I probably should have outlined some common terminology to uh, help us talk about the parts of a statsd message a little um, more consistently. But that was an oversight on my part. OK, so we've parsed the line. Um, we removed the measurement name. And this is the trailing type stuff. <laughs> I don't know if I can use type. That might. There, I'll do that. How's that? And we're going to sort the remaining tag strings. Middle one, push the measurement back on and join that into our shardable metric. All right, now let's print this. And what we do need is our emitter. I think that was back in. Ah, that's not how you type. Um, yeah, this that's dpy. Let's see what that did again. Just emitted two separate UDP messages per <clears throat> per second. Okay. Well, what we really want to do is emit multi-line messages as well, so we will test that.
Now, since I don't trust my Rust abilities, let's um, see whether it builds. No, it doesn't. Ah, right. Okay. We forgot to pull in regex for one, and then that might be the only thing. Use of undeclared type or module regex. Right. Goes in the Tomal, doesn't it? I think the one is like a version. So let's see in this Tomal. Yeah. Normally I think you can do a um, semantic versioning string here. Not sure what one means. Maybe one in this case is just in just whatever version you have, I have no idea. I don't know what the module, regex module version is currently. Cool, that was it. That's funny that it says it doesn't need to be mutable. Is that even true? Maybe, maybe it just thinks that because I'm not changing the value anywhere yet. I mean, I will when I do like signal capturing and then change the value. Just trying to be helpful, I guess. Let's see. Unused variable measurement type. Right, not using that yet. Um, Oh, and since we're not using the source IP yet, that'd be interesting. Yeah, we don't need to, to use that either. Could um, let's see what happens when we prefix it with an underscore. Is that is that really a way to tell Rust, hey, don't bother me if I don't use it? Interesting. Huh. It's a neat neat convention. Let's do the measurement type as well. All right, running does need to be mutable for right now. Okay, now let's run and see what we get. All right, we got those. Now let's change. Um, this to whoa emit um, multiple metrics in the same message. What can I even do? I can't remember if I can do um, a new line character instead of a single quoted Python string. That's what I don't remember. I really just want to do get host name again, but this one I want to right, this one was different order. It's supposed to be country. But instead of logins, um, uh, let's see. Let's just do that. Let's see what we get. Okay, we do get three. So it is parsing the lines correctly. So we're getting two logins. Um, and they both have been normalized. Oh, let's change the um, host for this one. Yeah, we'll make sure that this country here, I think it's probably fine. Okay, cool. We're about 10 minutes in, so we may stop soon, but um, let's kind of look ahead and see what else we might want to do. Actually, let me let me verify that this really is working as, as as it should. What if we do a trailing new line? I think I never never handled that case. Oh, still works. Maybe the... Um, maybe the line parser uh, 
just throws away empty lines. That's pretty cool. So we have a trailing new line. What happens if there's two trailing new lines? It's not like I don't trust things, huh? Oh, what's going on? Right. Yeah, that's what I was worried about. Unwrap on line 35. Yep, okay, so we do need to handle empty lines. We're just going to set ourselves up for some things to do next time because we're already about 10 minutes in. And do a couple other things. Want to make sure this really does work. What? Right. Okay. It does seem to work. What of these comments are irrelevant now? Yeah, I do need to look up the max EDP packet size, or perhaps there's a way to um, discover it within Rust, you know, pull it from the OS, see what the current setting is. That'd be nice. Whether we can do that. We did this with a regex. We did the parsing and sorting. And then we need to do sharding in the next video or so. Um, and then, yeah, we're gonna, gonna start to specify how we're going to um, split these messages up and send them. I was envisioning maybe a vec of strings where we have one vec per backend stats D server. But I need to look ahead into Rust's concurrency functionality. Maybe it has some built-in um, helpers for, like a go channels, I think is what they're called, or something like that, where for a thread, there's like data structures that you can link to it and just throw data in, and then the thread will consume what it can. And in thread safe and perhaps an atomic fashion so it's so I don't have any issues um, so I need to look into that right here we're assuming that the data we get from you know in the stats D message is valid UTF-8 which should be handled I already did that. All right. So I think that's good enough for now. Um, if you made it to the end, wow. So next time we will possibly work through some of this stuff <clears throat> or start setting us uh, start setting up a sharding function. Uh, what I think I'm going to use is the DJB hash. And that'll be interesting to try to port to Rust because the C code kind of makes use of the fact that a string is essentially a pointer to a char and you can increment that as you loop, you know, since it knows the, uh, the pointer size, it just increments to the next byte in the C string. So it'll be interesting to think through how to port that to Rust properly. Maybe there's uh, there's probably an easy way to just loop over characters. That's what we want, um, I think. I gotta have to look into whether the hashing function was meant to operate on bytes or whether it's safe for it to operate on uh, a Unicode character, which could be, you know, have a value more than more than one byte can hold. So UTF-8 can 
hold four byte characters. So we'll have to see. Alrighty. Thanks for watching.